What's up, everyone, and welcome to the RRBG podcast. In this episode, it's the great and powerful Troy Sanders of Mastodon. Mastodon has a huge tour coming up with Ghost and Spirit Box. We talk a little bit about that tour package and what it's been like to be on the road post-pandemic. We talked about their latest album, Hushed and Grim, the tragedies that helped influence the writing of that album. We talked about their new music video for More Than I Can Chew. We talked about the live experience. We talked about beer. It was a great conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please make sure to follow Mastodon at Mastodon Rocks on all the things. Check out his other bands, Killer Be Killed and Gone Is Gone. If you like this video, please give it a little like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you could. Put the little bell notification so you can get notifications when we have new videos. And check out our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash RRBG. I have some exclusive content up there and I want to put up more. Uh, so please come support the podcast and we can help grow this all together. Cheers. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. Today I'm being joined by the great Mr. Troy Sanders. How are you, brother? <laughs> That's too kind of you. Great. <laughs> That's a nice... I'm good, man. You're good? Okay, so let me try that. Let me start that over. What's up, everyone? Welcome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> With the good Troy Sanders. How are you? Well, sometimes I like to say instead of just, I'm, I'm doing good, I'm doing good enough. You're doing good enough. That's that's all that matters, right? Is that That's acceptable, right? Yeah, that's acceptable. You are uh, honestly the one member of Macedon that has eluded me over the years. Uh, I've been, uh, I've hung out and become friendly with Braun and and Brent and Bill, but you always uh, seem to be kind of, you know, elusive. I, I think I, I ran into you at Amoeba once when we when you guys played at Amoeba Music, and that was about it, like a brief. Hi, it was up? that quick, right? Uh, wow, do you think I've been avoiding you on purpose? Yeah, I think so. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Um, you guys have a very exciting tour coming up. I, uh, I believe in San Diego is the closest you're coming to, to like Los Angeles. It but, is. That's where it starts, yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're playing, you're opening with uh, Ghost and Spirit Box. Spirit Box is opening the show. but. Right. Uh, have you are you a big fan of Spirit Box? I mean, have you checked them out? Have you had a chance to see them? I just have heard them on uh, on Sirius uh, mm. satellite radio, both on the Rock Channel and the Metal Channel, and um, everything I've heard, I really liked. Okay, and uh, awesome production, uh, really powerful vocals, catchy riffs. So uh, I look forward to befriending them, <laughs> as we will we will be sharing stages and and uh, meals for a month straight. So, it's yeah, straight, I think they're cool. It's a straight month, huh? Um, I mean, you guys have done a couple tours post-pandemic. So, how are you feeling now that we're out of this whole, you know, weird two-year period where we were, you know, kind of questioning if there was going to be live music ever again? Uh, how are you feeling now? Yeah, it definitely changed the perspective uh, for myself and probably most people that kind of depended on, um, you know, there's always going to be a bunch of tours to do. There's always going to be crowds there. There's always going to be that opportunity. Um, but not the case, you know, and it always takes those moments of something getting stripped away before you kind of realize the importance of it. You know, the whole don't know what you got until it's gone kind of mentality. So, uh, yeah, when we went back out uh, to do the uh, run across the States with Opeth, um, we did two legs of that so far uh, this year, and they were both fantastic. Uh, we just returned from 35 days across Europe and the UK, Scandinavia. Uh, and that was great too. So to taste the U S crowds as well as overseas, um, it's, it's very evident that people are out and they're back and they're excited and they missed it equally as much as the artists that travel and kind of depend on it, uh, for their livelihood. So, um, overall it was really fantastic. And, and, you know, that energy, uh, I always call it the magic that happens between a crowd, but between a fan base or a crowd and people on stage, whether I'm at a show and feeling great or on stage and the, and the overall vibe and energy is really great. That's magic. Yeah. And that, that can't be done with a live stream. And, uh, you know, that's why people, instead of just watching a whole set on YouTube, they want to pay the big money to go see the damn show because that energy happens once. Um, you know, I still go spend tons of money for concert tickets or sporting events because, yeah, I can watch it on the TV from the comfort of my home. But when you go there, it's it, there's something special there. And, if, you know, if you have the ability and the, and the money to buy these tickets, you know, sports, concerts, all the above, um, it's pretty special. So I'm really, really glad that it was back. That's for damn sure. 
Yeah. I speak for my whole band when I say that for sure. Um, <laughs> because, you know, there was a while there. It was like, wow, do we need, do we need to get jobs and just maybe get together and record music for fun or like what's happening? You know, that uncertainty was, was very bizarre and uh, I didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know many people that did. I mean, there's a yeah. few people that did. They're lazy asses that are like happy to be just home, not doing anything. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, there's a few things I wanted to bring up, like that energy, that magic you're talking about. There's a, a to a smaller degree is also what's going on with movies. You know, there's movies that were being released in theaters that are also just going straight to HBO Max or something. And I have friends who are like, "Oh, why am I going to go to the theater?" It's like, "Well, is your TV like 200 feet tall? Like, you know, do you have one of these ridiculous movie theater sound systems at home? I doubt it. It's not the same experience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, than watching Dune at home versus going to like an IMAX or something. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I understand both both angles. You know, of uh, not wanting to leave home, save a bunch of money, comforts of your own kitchen and toilet, just a mere steps away. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but I'm a fan of of uh, or you know, I mean, I've been traveling and touring for the bulk of my life, so I recognize how that those moments that are that are that are always not guaranteed. You know, and so I'm a big fan of going out there and doing it. And speaking of movie theaters, man, I need to I need to get back out to the theater. I've only been a couple times over the past couple of years. And it's like every time I leave a movie theater, a bowling alley, or uh, a comedy show, mm -hmm. on the walk back to the car, I always look at my wife or whoever I'm with, and it's like, we have to do this more often. Why, why don't? And then, uh, you know, months and months later, then we'll go bowling. Months and months later, we go back to the theater. But, <laughs> you know, so there's something special about it. Um, and yeah, it's I, a special I, I, I don't experience. Think, I don't think that'll ever die, um, no matter if movies are released right to the Netflix or whatever, whatever platform comes right into your living room. Um, I certainly hope it doesn't die because getting out there and hitting the theater is, uh, is special too. And it kind of gets you out of your house. And, and I don't know, I'm a big fan. I'll just say that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go see every movie in the theater, but you know, it for special occasion movies, like a big, big, big spectacle, like Dune or, you know, one of the Marvel movies or whatever it is you're into. It's always nice to just have a day out and go out and experience life with other people too. Cause that's the, another thing, another magical thing about live shows and movies going to a theater is the, the people's reaction as well around you. Everybody else is laughing. Everybody else is shocked. And you also feel like an elevated sense of that, you know? Agree. Yeah, it's important. The, uh, the human connection, even for the most introverted of us. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of that same magic, I wanted to bring up a little story. I haven't really brought this up with any of the other guys when I've talked to them, but I uh, once took a drive from Miami to North Carolina to see you guys perform Crack the Sky at uh, I don't remember the venue. I want to say the Orange Peel, but I could be wrong. Um, but my buddy decided to. Uh, my buddy Tommy, who rest in peace, but he decided to feed me a bunch of mushrooms before the show. And uh, at one point during your set, I think it was during Czar or something, I ended up looking up and seeing what felt like a an entity above you, like kind of projecting energy to the band. And then the band was projecting energy to the audience. And I just kept tapping my phone. I'm like, dude, dude, do you see that? And he's like, what, bro? Is the screens? I'm like, no, not the screens. I see the screens. But yeah, do you feel that there is maybe perhaps some kind of energy, uh, consciousness, uh, something that's kind of takes control over you while you're performing that helps you kind of amplify whatever you're doing towards the audience? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, I think that stems from passion and your drive. Um, and more often, I, I believe it's the fact that, you know, when you're on stage for one hour a day, the other 23 hours, you're, you're traveling, you're out, and you're grinding to do whatever it takes to do that one hour, whatever it is, of stage time. Mm -hmm. So it's got to mean when you're done with that stage, good show, bad show, great crowd, no crowd, whatever, you have to be relieved, uh, exhausted in a beautiful way, you know, ha ha having uh, channeled your art to the people that are there, whether it's four, 400, 4,000, uh, because that's the per that's the sole purpose of what got you in the dream world of trying to be on a stage in front of people that like your music in the first place. So I think there's, for me, uh, for sure, a hundred percent. Um, it means, it means the whole day that defines my day. You know, it's like people that have passion for any of their, their work, they go and they give it their all and good day or bad day, they come home and they say, Hey man, I gave it my all. Uh, now I can have food, have a beer, go to bed, whatever. So, uh, it, it means it's, you know, it's, it means everything to me 
when we're on stage. So I do believe it amplifies whatever my character, my spirit, my all, it's for sure an alter ego. It always has been. Mm. Um, people that meet me sometimes, they say, wow, you seem like a very calm, mild spoken person. And, and sometimes on stage, you seem like a, a wild demon or something, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. and I say, I think that's been my outlet for the bulk of my life is getting, you know, that's been how I channel my feelings, emotions, passions, whatever through music. So um, I've always said that it's really incredible to have a bunch of bandmates that kind of share my vision or share each other's vision. And we're able to have these opportunities to tour and play shows for people. And whether they're on mushrooms or not, I hope that they feel, you know, uh, they walk away happy. That's always been the goal when you, when you rely on, you know, fans that pay money for tickets to, to, consistently drive your livelihood but um i also find some of the best compliments ever is when people are um um uh on something on some kind of trip some kind of kick uh yeah. with or without substance to something where it touches them on even a more advanced level um and that just takes my magic point about you know being on stage and the fans reaction and that circle of energy that makes makes beautiful magic uh that only elevates that to 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 I find it harder to explain you know you felt it i was feeling it and then we got to share this story with each other 10 years later or whatever. yeah man. so it's incredible man and uh and and you know anytime someone is complimentary of anything we do whether it's a cool song title or a great record or a great live show whatever um that's always great to hear you know it's it's a compliment in its purest form and it's art so you know we never expect all these people in this crowd, they're going to love our band tonight. Absolutely right. not. We put out an album. We know it's not going to please everybody. So, you know, art stems. I feel art stems from a very uh, selfish place where you create what you do and you put it out there. And if it's accepted, then great. And if it's not accepted, it should still feel great that you were able to put that painting on the wall. You're finishing that canvas. You completed your short video. You did your album, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, you crafted your own beer. You opened your restaurant. Where your passion lies and your enthusiasm is kind of what, you know, should comfort you at the end of the day and be like, hey, man, that was awesome. And, and one person liked it or more. It's yeah. fucking great, man. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. People need to think about that a little more and, and focus on when they're trying to create something, focus on the actual art of it and what you want to put out there instead of what are people going to think? You know, what are the comments going to say? Am I going to get a lot of likes? Like that's the kind of the world we live in now where people... Everyone thinks, you know, because we have this technology at our fingertips, they think that everyone can be an artist or everyone can be a celebrity of some sort or be famous. And, you know, they go in with the wrong perspective as opposed to, hey, let me create something awesome. It's more, what can I do to get more likes, more videos, you know, more, more right. views or whatever. And uh, that's, it concerns me with our, uh, our young people, you know, like the, the 10 year olds to 15 year olds, especially like it's already difficult to you know navigate your way through life in those formative years and with 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 that handheld device i don't know man it it worries me but um uh but th but it also carries over to like if if mastodon was going to say you know what our next album is going to be a banger worldwide success it's going to elevate us to you know um hysteria from def leppard type stuff we're going to do 10 solid radio hits it's gonna, you know the biggest hooks whatever um we you know, we've never approached anything like that. Could we try to do that? For sure. Would would it would it and could it elevate us to massive success compared to what we are now? Quite possibly. Would that you know allow us to go to you know to leave the practice room every night, um, feeling really stoked on our riffs and what we accomplished that day? Not as much as it has the past twenty years, because it just you know it's it's tried and true and it's pure, and we have a formula, which is almost not having a formula. Our agenda is not having an agenda you know when it comes to creating music but um but yeah we're worrying about like if we tr if we try to write an album or a song that it was going to please almost the entirety of our fan base um first of all that would be a pain in the ass to try to accomplish accomplish and it probably wouldn't work and it would overall be just a waste of our precious time so are yeah there any, it's, it's are there scary. any are there any little things that you uh when you are writing a new album you you're like well we have to kind of do a couple of these things just to maintain our you know our sound because you don't want to have mastodon album and come out with like dubstep all out of nowhere so like is there any like are there any mandates like okay we do need to have a solo at some point you know what i mean anything like that you know i couldn't remember or i cannot pinpoint or remember a single 
preconceived spoken conversation that we might have had with each other before mm-hmm. writing. It's always come, it comes, you know, it can start with just a riff and someone's in, is, is excited about like, I know it sounds basic, but I, I can see a bigger picture and we can put this other part to it and it can have a cool vocal there. So if someone's excited about even the simplest of an idea, it's worth focusing on and trying to build upon that, grow it into a second riff and ultimately a full song and hopefully a great song that's on a collection of greater songs on an album. So we've never said we need a couple fast songs, we need a couple long progressive style songs like the czar off crack the sky we need to have something really really aggressive like our old stuff to please our core fans from the beginning (laughs) and we need to have a radio song just because we need to maintain that angle um we don't say that stuff ever um it's just you know it's been the same four of us in the band for uh since we formed in 2000 so i think the formula is is kind of not having a formula and we just show up at the practice space and whoever's got a good idea we just kind of go for it um I can see how that wouldn't work for every other band out there. I recognize that we're fortunate that we've got these four people that come in um, with different musical backgrounds. And and I think that's probably led to uh, not really needing to talk about it because we just want to be stoked with what we do. And it's hard to please all four of us, but if all four of us get to a spot with an album's creation, when we're like, that's cool. I'm really proud of this. That's awesome. What a lot of work we just did. Wow. I'm cool with it. You cool with it? Yep. High fives, hugs. (laughs) And then it's kind of a done deal yeah um that's awesome man yeah and you and you guys are now you're reaching that point where you're becoming one of the the longest standing bands that still has all of their original members you know yeah it's bizarre man it's (laughs) yeah it's cool i um that gets brought up a lot you know a couple years ago we were like 18 years old as a band or so and it's like holy shit we're doing something really rare you know yeah but you know there's no contractual obligation to be in this band it's just started the way bands should be started you, you meet some like-minded individuals who want to create music and you jam and it feels good. You play a show and it's magical and you know, you keep it rolling. Yeah. But like any relationship, humans are not always guaranteed to grow together. It's there's, there's fortunate circumstances, hard work and uh, you know, and fate all aligning to say, you know what? I love this woman. She loves me, but all of a sudden we grew apart. We divorced yeah. boyfriend, girlfriend, Best friends since first grade. We grew apart. It's very normal to do that. Um, thankfully, we haven't. That's great, man. Yeah, yeah. I think great. we're all really gra- uh, grateful that it's you know we recognize that. Um, so internally within the band, I think we're all all uh, you know very uh, very grateful to that it's worked out like that. It's fantastic. I've been there. I want to say from the beginning, it wasn't all the way from the beginning, but I mean, I, I think I saw March of the Fire Ants on some music channel like when they still played music videos on television. And uh, I remember thinking, wow, this is the he- one of the heaviest things I've ever heard and weird and kind of scary. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. You know, and yeah. I've been I've been following ever since. Like, you know, we we, we uh, you know, I went to, with my old band. We went and saw you guys at like Culture Room when it was like a small, tiny room. And, you know, it's and then to see you now playing these giant arenas and, you know, laser shows, because I went to the one here at the Palladium, I think, with Opeth and you guys had crazy lasers. It's uh, it's such a beautiful, you know, evolution of the band. And you know, uh, even though we don't person like I know some of the guys personally, like we're not homies where we're hanging out every day. I still feel a sense of pride, like, oh, wow, look at how far they've come. And, you know, I'm still part of the journey, too. So that's awesome. You yeah, know? That's great to hear, man. And that's always what we've wanted, too, is is we've always encouraged and hoped that people that understood something about us that they liked could latch on to, that they would just join us for the ride, the musical journey, um, because we're not writing music uh, to specifically please you or our core base or our future fans, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. It's just we're on this thing that we don't even know where it's going to lead, the next song, next album, next tour. So we've always appreciated people and that have, that have latched on to some degree of us and, and continued uh, following us and you know, you know, supporting our live shows or picking up the record. or um, That's incredible. So we love hearing that. That's, that's amazing. So uh, uh, going into this tour... Um you know how do you kind of because it is three different bands very different bands you know ghost was started off a little heavier but has kind of gone a little more 
uh, friendly for the ears, I guess I would call it. I'm not going to call it poppy because it's not. Uh, but like, you know, they've kind of veered away from like the heavy metal into a more accessible music. And then you got Spirit Box, who's kind of like extremely heavy. And you guys are somewhere in the middle. So how are you basing, like you have such a huge catalog of songs to choose from. Like, what do you, where do you, how do you go about doing that? Well, I personally enjoy those kind of, sh these kind of package tours. Um, I like them all for, and I'll try to kind of put this in a nutshell. Like we've been fortunate to tour with almost every one of our favorite heavy bands. We've toured with Iron Maiden, Slayer, Slipknot, Tool, Judas Priest, you know, all, of chains. <laughs> all, all, all of our favorites. We've been so fortunate over the years to have done tours with all of them, you know, Deftones, um, Alice in Chains. Yes. Um, and that's awesome. Without us going to a co-headline like us and Opeth, like we just did for six weeks this year, um, there's not many other bands that we can open for now that the that the that this headliners crowd will. Some of them will know us, and some of them will have no idea who we are. Mm. We don't get that opportunity very often, so I like that. Um, you know, we've done this over time. Like it's been 12 years now, but we went out and did a full co-headlining tour with Against Me. We loved their band. They loved our band. But our crowd base, we shared a few of the same core fans, but otherwise it was vastly different. They yeah. got a lot of fans from us. We got a lot of fans from them. So we, I liked that. Um, but almost everywhere, when there's a metal fan that wear like their denim battle jackets, <laughs> yeah. there's always a ghost patch right next to the Slayer, the Maiden, the Creator, the King Diamond. It's part of that aesthetic of heavy metal. Yeah, but their, their appeal overall to me is right up there with all the jackets that, that are loaded with patches that, that people wear. So I know a lot of ghost fans are, are familiar with us. Um, but because they become so massive on, uh, uh, mainstream rock radio, a huge portion of their fans are probably gonna have no idea who we are. Yeah. I like that. I want to get in front of, I like familiar faces, but I'm also excited because it doesn't happen very often to get in front of new faces that are like, who are these guys? And hopefully, just like you 20 years ago, could find something about us as we support, as we're the main support for Ghost. Be like, I like that band. I'm going to see their music video tomorrow, or I might buy their t-shirt tonight. That's how it keeps our career going. It's moments like this. And so I'm, I embrace this tour. And I know that Spirit Box is really gaining popularity fast. Oh, yeah. um, so when I put my mind in, the, in the, or when I put myself in the mind of a, of a concert goer, I think that's a great package. Whether you know all the bands or not, that's going to get me to spend whatever the tickets are. I don't know. Probably close to 100 bucks when it's all said and done with convenience fees and whatnot. I have no idea what they are. Yeah. But that's going to hopefully propel you to get off your ass, get out of the house, go to that arena, and see these three bands who are out there. That we're doing it. Um, and, yeah, and if you don't like the music, just sit back and watch the lasers, you know? And, <laughs> and well, yeah. when, when did the decision come in to bring in lasers? Because to me, lasers... And, uh, and this is no disrespect, I'm old and you're, you know, so it feels like classic rock, you know, like when I was in 1992, I saw Pink Floyd pulse and it was all lasers. And nice. that's when I was like, uh, when I saw you guys, I'm like, oh man, am I old? And I'm like, <laughs> like what, no. this is, is this classic rock? <laughs> for us, um, for, we did a seven week European tour supporting tool in 2006. So we got, we got done playing. Uh, and we would always be excited to watch the whole tool set. And they have, you know, massive video walls, massive lasers. And after that tour, we said, and this is 2006, so 16 years ago, we said, if we ever play arenas, we're bringing lasers. <laughs> well, before this tour that we're about to embark on, uh, we, we got, you know, we, we had the itch and we went out and we, you know, spent a ton of money on, on production and lasers and hiring someone who's legally permitted to, do, to, to run them. And I added them to the show that we just did this whole past past year. So uh, we like to look at them, and, and we know that other people do too. So yeah, yeah. hell if yeah! You don't like our, if you don't like our band, just watch the video and watch the laser. Watch the lasers. <laughs> it's a win win situation, right? For sure, for sure. It's, you got to put on a good show, you know, regardless of what it is. Like it, people have different tastes in music, so that's going to always be. Yeah. You know, it's always going to be a thing you fight against. But like you said, if you put on a good show with lasers and stuff, at least they can watch that, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, nothing wrong with a little eye candy, I hope. Yeah, yeah. So you also have a new video out uh, for uh, More Than I Could Chew. And yeah. 
That was awesome, by the way. I immediately dropped it on my Facebook. I'm like, what? 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 You know, it's it's got this vintage uh, kind of horror feel to it. Uh, to tell me a little bit about. Did you have anything? Any input with the creation of the video? Yeah, the, the director Zev um, came with a treatment that was going to incorporate um, a classic monster type vibe. So right away, we're like, okay, we're yeah. interested in that. And then we just saw, uh, you know, a, a, a selection of his previous work. And um, it, it seemed like, wow, if you're interested in doing this with us and the work that you do is fantastic. Yes, music video it is. And we had the time to be all together in Atlanta to get our parts filmed. Because we haven't been, uh, over the past four or five, six videos we've done, we've been in two or three of them and we've not been in the other few. So uh, it was cool. He just wanted us to, you know, get monstered up and um and just again just you kind of trust someone's body of work when you see what they've done it's like wow that's badass that's, and you're excited to work with me we're excited to work with you that's how great relationships are are, are blossomed you know yeah. um so he did a fantastic job we shot it in atlanta he did the monster and the girl scenes on a sound stage in new york sent us the uh the rough cut and we were just like wow that's yeah. that's you know like our live show with lasers uh we need to continue building, you know, we've played over a thousand shows. We need to keep building on that. Um, we put out a lot of videos. We need to keep building on that. Just not to see another video of the four of us in an old warehouse jamming. That's okay. But we, if we can, and we have the budget to do so, take it to the next level, step it up, you know, have it interesting. I want short music videos are sh uh, so short lived. Yeah. Um, sometimes if it's, if it's mediocre or less, you see it once like I saw the new so-and-so video. Yes, I did. But you liked it. you saw it, you liked it, and you said you like reposted it or something. Yeah. That's the difference. So we we try to uh, you know up the up the um, production and up the eye candy and up the um, you know integrity or the, the 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 creativeness of music videos, just like we do with our own songs and our live sets. Yeah. So always you know, and I'm glad that all four of us are still on the same page about sinking more money into this and sinking more money into this because I can imagine. You know, like, guys, we've been doing this for 20 years. Like, it's fine. Just put it out. <laughs> yeah. People will like it. That could, I could see that being a being an easy conversation. Um, but thankfully, we're still pushing ourselves. And, you know, we're still very much into writing newer, fresher, better, bigger albums. You know, playing a better show tonight than we did last night. And hoping that the next music video is better than the last. Or at least different and living in its own world. So the creation, you know, the, creative, the creative well that we... Um, collectively share is, is is far from dry that's great man because that is that is the downfall of an artist to me in my perspective when you get comfortable when you start thinking like oh yeah i've been doing this i know what i'm doing just fucking put it out there that's when you start getting lazy things start not being as good and people can tell people can tell yeah that you're just you're just phoning it in yeah i guess that's when you become <clears throat> complacent and uh like yeah it's like yeah oh, that's good that song's good we don't need to work on it anymore yeah you know or this yeah, that video is all right. No need to edit it. It's fine the way it is. Yeah, I think over time, uh, people would see through that. And um, uh, I'm glad we're not headed in, in that direction. But it, but it is a thin line, too, especially for people that are creating that may not be, you know, uh, at the level you guys are at, just kind of trying to get started, where they're writing music and they or maybe you know, it doesn't have to be music. It could be painting, whatever. Uh, they always have this like nagging, like, oh, I'm not done. I'm not done. It's, you know, it, it's it, it's never going to be done. If you're a good artist, it, you should never feel that feeling of like, ah, that's done. Put it out. So yeah, it should don't, don't let it discourage you if you're a young up and coming artist, musician, whatever it may be. Like that feeling is good. That's a yeah. good feeling to have. <laughs> and if you have, uh, you know, if you trust in your bandmates, yeah, um, or if you're a paint, solo painter and you trust in your best friend or your, um, you know, a, a colleague, yeah, um, you, you need you need some assistance sometimes to say, hey, that painting is done. Put the brushes down. Yeah. You know, you need help because you could go on. You can make this song longer. We could add another solo at the end. We could come back and repeat the beginning, do it again, or, or you know, or a painting like, nope, we could do more color here. Like, when to stop? It's it can be very tricky. So, yeah. having a, a a trustworthy uh, opinion from uh, from an outsider, a best friend, or in our world, sometimes we need a, a producer to come in and say, here's our demos. 
what are they? Do you are they? What, <laughs> yeah. what's, what's happening? Because we're what so, can we do with this? <laughs> we're so deep in it. We don't know if they're really good or they're just decent ideas or you know. So yeah, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, that's for absolutely. damn sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I wanted to bring something up because I, I asked Braun about this and I wanted to ask you. Um, you know, do you feel a lot of your albums? especially this last one and crack the sky and everything are tied to pretty tragic events in your life, in your personal life. Yeah. Um, does that make it difficult when you're on stage to perform? Does it like dredge up these, you know, tragedies? Um, you know, do you see it as a potential problem where like, man, if, if we keep writing these albums about tragedies, like it's, you know, it's eventually going to get too much. Yeah. Uh, Yes, but more no. Um, yes, it, it can be you know daunting when it's like each night night you're recreating a very heavy set of uh, you know songs that that aren't ha they're not happy. Yeah. Um, but I found early on, and I would imagine my guys would agree that from those type of moments or experiences comes some really you know they can potentially come some really great uh, art. You know, yeah. um, and it's also, I realized after we did practice, Scott, I was like, man, we're being very vulnerable here. And, you know, but I was like, but we're artists. And, and what, like, if people can latch onto that and connect to us, not only musically, but on, like a, on a personal level, um, it's very, it should be relatable worldwide because we're just going through the same thing that you're, you've gone through or will go through. Um, we're not bigger than you or better than you. It's like, this is how we're dealing with this. And we're always trying to turn something heavy and dark into something beautiful and light, you know, by having a pretty song and put it on a record, that record lives forever, whether it's a tribute um, or whatever. But it always, it's always channeled from, from darkness, you know, um, more often than not, you know, after Crack the Sky, that's why we had that knee-jerk reaction. It's like, okay, The Hunter. Let's have some fun. Short, sweet songs, upbeat, <laughs> lyrical subject matter. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, and then uh, with with Hushed and Grim, you know, losing our best friend and manager for fifteen years. There's no way that we were not going to dive in to the effect that he had on our lives. Absolutely, yeah. There was no way we we, we could avoid that or ignore that. No way. So we knew it was going to be a, a, a heavily daunting task emotionally. Um, Hi, buddy. <laughs> yeah, my, my little greyhound came to say hi. I have two of them. I have two of them locked away in a room somewhere. <laughs> nice. Uh, she just came barreling through the door. But um, so, yeah, with with Hushed and Grim, we knew what we had to do, and with a little time on our hands uh, because of pandemic twenty twenty, we wound up writing enough. You know, we we didn't intend on doing a double album. It yeah. just it just grew into so many songs that we didn't want to cut any of them. Um, so yeah, very, very dark and heavy, uh, thematically, but, um, every night that we've played these songs, um, since the record came out on stage, it makes me feel good because ultimately now it's more of a celebratory thing. And I know that I'm on that stage because of this dude, yeah. you know, Nick John, who, who, who was managed, found our band 2004, signed us and just worked his ass off and, and changed our lives. Uh, each and every transaction he did along the way was always for the better. So there's no way that we couldn't just pour as much gratitude into a record of sadness or sadness and gratitude, I guess. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a lot of smiles and laughter, but it's really serious. And, and we're, we're, it's, it's a tribute and a, a dedication to him each and every night. So. And a beautiful album. It is, man. I'm a little sad. I still haven't received my vinyl. Um, even though I walked into Amoeba and I saw it on the shelf, I'm like, I could just buy it and then, I don't know, give away my pre-order whenever it arrives. You still don't have one. <laughs> no, it's weird. I emailed uh, I emailed Warner Brothers about it and they were like, sorry, just, you know, stuff. I've got a stack. <laughs> I've got a stack of 20 of them right here I'm looking at. When this is done, shoot me your mailing address. I'll put one in the mail to you today. I promise. No problem. Oh, well, I appreciate that. That's not why I brought it up. But no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I got I got twenty there, and I've got no friends. So I've got I've got I've got one now. I I doubt that you have no friends. Come on. Speaking well, of yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of friends, like you've got two other bands, you know that you're in too because you're a maniac and you don't stop working. Yeah, <laughs> those um, like most 
people that have multiple bands or projects, they stem from, from, from a fun aspect, you know, um, most of the time, I think it's from sharing stages or you're playing at a festival or you meet somebody after your show and you're having a good time. Like, dude, we start a band together. That's how it always starts. Yeah. And one out of 10 times you have that conversation, it happens. I've probably had 15, 20 of those conversations, but <laughs> the ones in the, you know, the next day you realize, Oh yeah, that dude was cool. He likes me. I like him too. And we said we were going to start a band. So I'm going to hit him up and see how he really felt about that idea. That's how my two other bands have happened. And they're fun as hell to do. If they weren't super enjoyable, I wouldn't do it at all because Mastodon uh, thankfully keeps me busy enough um, where I don't need to leave the house any more than I already do as we practice all the time and we're, we you know, have a healthy touring schedule again. Yeah. So I don't really want to leave the house unless it's uh, worthy. And right. when, I jam, when I jam with uh, the other guys in, in my other two bands, it's, it's a great time and it's very valid, you know. It's pure. It's for fun. There's no expectations. There's no pressure on your shoulders for the next album or whatever. It's just, it's the same way you start a band when you're 16 years old. You find some friends that you really appreciate. You get together and make music with them. And if something good happens, voila. Yeah, man. And you've got, you've got such a distinct voice that, you know, it's, it's hard to achieve actually to have that unique sounding voice. Cause whenever you hear, you know, killer be killed or gone is gone, you know, that's you. Who, oh, nice. who, whoever's listening to that is like oh yeah that's troy that's got to be troy you know if it's not him someone's trying to be troy you know what i mean um so it, how did did you i mean you when mastodon started there wasn't a whole lot of singing going on no so it's something that developed over the years yeah um the first like three or four months of mastodon we had a fifth member who was our vocalist um but once we started like working on our first song or two i immediately started booking tours uh, DIY tours up the East Coast of the United States. Our band's based in Atlanta. Um, on our very first run, our, our, our singer at the time just realized, uh, couldn't do it. He wasn't in a good space to be in a touring, live in a van and make no money. Yeah. So he backed out and we had more tours booked. At, I had booked VHF halls, basements, boat sheds. We'd play anywhere. <laughs> and uh, so my guitar player, Brent, and I, we just said, hey man, instead of like finding another guy and auditioning people, on this tour coming up, me and you will just step up and just give it our best because no one knows who we are anyway. And they haven't, you know, um, so we said, yeah, we just kept it simple. So Brent and I just stepped up to the mic and over time, we just kind of picked up on it and never wanted to spend the time or energy to, uh, you know, look for a vocalist. So yeah, it kind of just fell into, you know, kind of fell into place. And of course, you know, when you scream your ass off after a handful of years and you got melodic parts, it's like, Hey, maybe we could put some vocal melody. Uh, uh, to counteract this guitar part, you know, so it's been a very slow process. And, um, it took us a while to really hone in on, on, on our vocals, especially in the live environment, but we've been better than ever, uh, as of this album, the touring cycle, uh, in my years, at least. So, uh, it's been a work in progress, but, but yeah, uh, thankfully Brent, myself and our drummer, Braun have all stepped up to the mic and, and all have distinctly different voices that, we've been able to make it work when we can all chime in on a certain song or, or, or a record overall. So, so thankfully that's worked out. That's, that's also true. I forgot, you know, like Brent's got a very unique voice too. And so does Braun. They all have their own distinct sound and you know, yours, I, like I, you didn't take any lessons, like any classes or anything. You just kind of kept pushing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I, f I feel I felt that with each album that you were like trying new things, like going a higher register, trying hold this note long. Like I see you pushing yourself. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because we all play instruments, I think it took us. We've always been players first, you know, and it yeah. took us multiple albums to realize, hey, we should probably start focusing more on our vocals as well, you know. So we were very, very uh, much late bloomers on that on that issue, but. Uh, like I said, I, I feel like we're, we're we're all singing as good as ever, that, you know, at near peak potential because we, we're taking better care of our bodies on tour. And we realize that we don't want people to get a glimpse of our band by a really terrible iPhone clip where we sound like a bunch of, you know, cats up there. Like, <laughs> So, you know, uh, we've taken it more seriously as time has gone along. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that's it's just kind of a, was a very long but natural progression. Speaking of vocalists, uh, this is something I'm sure you've all thought of. I mean, you've kind of done a thing, uh, but I wanted to express 
uh, the desi- the desire on my end for a potential uh, Mastodon with Scott Kelly uh, album slash tour, whatever yeah. it may be. <laughs> you know, we, we've done two two uh, sorry two tours across Europe mm. that we did all eight songs with Scott. Scott toured with us, um, yeah. and we always we always wanted to bring that to the states as well. Yeah. I would love to see that. Uh, I would too. also I, like a, an, a like an EP of just songs with him, like four new just Scott Kelly songs or something. That way, you have like a full album worth of Scott Kelly songs with Mastodon. You know, we we share that dream with you. Whether it happens <laughs> or not, I don't know. But we love Scott dearly, and we've always appreciated his friendship. He's been a musical hero and a dear friend for for a long time now. So we, we love Scott very very much. Nice man. Um, also, I want—I see the bottles behind you. Are you collecting all of your Mastodon beers? Uh, I do. I have one of each. Nice. Uh, which I believe is—I uh, counted fourteen. Uh, I might be missing one or two. I'm not sure, but I, we have fourteen official beers uh, that have been done by eleven breweries. Wow. I think McKellar did a couple, and uh, Mars Brow out of Germany did did three. So maybe maybe nine or ten brewer, breweries. For the 14 or maybe 15 different beers that we've put out nice so man, yeah. yeah i always thought uh, you know when i whenever a long time ago before we had a beer when a band had a beer i thought that was the the pinnacle of success because mm. you don't achieve you don't achieve that as a band like we're gonna stick together as a band and one day we're gonna have a beer you know <laughs> at, le- at least i've never heard of that as, as yeah. a common goal but i remember seeing like so and so they have a beer like that's incredible that's like two worlds that came together that's truly hand in hand you know um so when when our first beer hit i was like this is amazing and then uh our drummer braun has been spearheading the 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 communications and relationships with various breweries around the world so he's in a huge part of that success of us having multiple beers being released but uh it makes me pretty damn happy to have have multiple beers being released over the past 10 12 years yeah, man, they're all. They have all been pretty great too. I've, I've, I think I've gotten all of them as well. I know recently with the Hushed and Grim series, like I got all four. I think it was. Yeah, it was four. Yeah. I went out and I reached out to every brewery. I'm like, guys, I have money, and like, you know, I'll promote you on the show. Whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Please, please send me a four pack. And right. uh, I got to go to the release of the Emperor of Sand one, which was uh, that big bottle. I think it's the big right, the one on yep. the right. Yep. Yeah, I got to go to the release. I met, met up with Braun out there at McKellar, and what, what an amazing beer! Fourteen percent ridiculous stout with a bunch of spices and shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, remember they were like here the, the, before we played. They're like here they are. Here's the release. You know, would you yeah. like to, to you know try some? And I was like, dude, that's a heavy beer. Like, <laughs> yeah. I need to play soon. I have a lot of words to remember <laughs> and a lot of notes to play. Yeah, um, good times. Yeah, yeah, beer, beer is great. Beer is the blessing and the curse. Blessing and the curse. As long as you can keep it under control, you know, you're good. You can yeah. have a couple beers here and there. That's not a. But if you're one that's pounding a 24 pack a day, you got to maybe slow down. That's a, yeah. It's pretty. <laughs> it's an impressively intense. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's so damn good. Uh, just a couple real quick. Do you have any? prized possessions of memorabilia in your house like what's your favorite piece of like that that goes with you wherever you move oh wow that's a good question man um i mean i've got a a, a vinyl a, a lp to a tote that's got one of every release i've ever been a part of oh, um, wow. so it's like a musical documentary of my life i guess mm. um that's pretty important just because that shows like if you didn't know anything about me and I was a dead person, you came to my house and someone said, this is what he did. Uh, well, here's like, you know, whatever, 30 albums worth of stuff that I was a part of. So that's probably been my biggest accomplishment. Um, so I guess I, I definitely consider that a prized possession or, or you know, uh, my proudest achievement over a body of work, if you will. Other than that, man, I mean, I put all my family photos in digital form so they don't get burned on burned up if there's a house fire. Good call. Um, so that's good to go. Um, so shit, I've always felt like if our house flooded or caught fire, what do we need to grab? And it's basically, uh, basically at this point, um, well, albums can be replaced. Yeah. Basically, it's just grab the dogs, get out. 
Grab the dogs and get it. You don't have like a, a little statue that was given to you by like, I don't know, Rob Halford or something that you're like, okay, I'm putting this over here. No one needs to see that. The, ever. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I've got some, uh, well, like, like a, uh, the Grammy trophy. Own one oh. of those. Um, that's, uh, I have a stack of receipts on my desk where I put the Grammy on top of. So if anyone ever asks, I say, yeah, it's a paperweight. Um, <laughs> That's always good for a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, everything is replaceable, you know. So yeah. um, uh, I don't really have a have a something I could really just say, dude. Yes, it's this. Uh, most of the band oriented stuff, um, like trophies and like the, uh, that we've or you know accolades we've been gifted. Um, there we share. We put those all in our practice space in Atlanta, and uh, you know just have a big shelf full of that stuff. Cool. So yeah, a couple of greyhounds, man. That's 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 my prized possession, I guess. Well, yeah, you got to take care of the babies. That's the most important part. They're part of the family. People they don't are. people don't think that way sometimes, but I don't get it. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's uh, we're up time wise, so I'm going to wrap this up. All everybody, right. everybody that's wa- I mean, I could talk to you all day, but uh, <laughs> everybody that's watching and listening, pick up Hushed and Grim if you have not. Uh, incredible double album. Uh, watch the video for more than I can chew. It's out now. If you're in any of the cities or close to any of the cities that they're going to with Ghost and Spirit Box, please go. I'm going to drive down to San Diego. That's like a two and a half hour drive. I'm going to go watch that. Uh, so there's no excuse. You, An hour or two hour drive is not that bad. Get in your car and drive to the nearest city. Uh, but do you have any kind of social media for people to follow you or anything like that? I have zero. Nice. How is that? <laughs> I, I've been told it's, uh, you know, I... Uh, it, I like it. I'm, I'm, I live pretty simply, um, mm. but uh, um, I recognize the power of, of it for sh- of, of having media and, done, and when done correctly. But um, no, I, I, I'm a caveman. I still live under a rock. I don't know what's going on in the news. I don't know where my friends are on vacation at. I don't. I don't know much at all. You know, I don't know what bands are rolling through town. Okay. So that's there is a downside of, of, of being clueless on a social level. But uh, but no, I've got no way for people to get a hold of me. Or follow well, anything that I do. <laughs> follow at Mastodon Rocks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, follow at uh, Killer Be Killed. I I think is the URL. You could probably just search Killer yeah. Be Killed. Search for Gone Is Gone. That way you can keep in tr- you know in touch in case he releases new music. Since there's no other means. Um, but dude, thank you so much. This yeah, means a you. lot. It means a lot to me to have you on the show. Like I said, uh, you've been the one member that has eluded me, but. Uh, We're here. Um, And guys, thank you for watching and listening. Cheers.